Hi everyone, so here we are with our last section of chapter 18. So this is 18.3 and this is on colligative properties. So colligative properties depend on the number of particles in solution, okay? And it's the number of solute particles in solution. So um, it's going to change these three things. It's gonna change the vapor pressure, the boiling point, and the freezing point. So we call the vapor pressure one, we call this one vapor pressure lowering. So the more particles it has, the lower the vapor pressure is going to be. The boiling point one, we call this one boiling point elevation. So the more particles you have in solution, or the more solute particles you have in solution, the higher the boiling point is going to be. And then the last one, we call this one freezing point depression, because the more solute particles um, in solution will lower or depress the freezing point. So now what I'm going to do is that we're going to go through each of these three different colligative properties and then explain why does vapor pressure get lower, why does the boiling point get higher, and why does the freezing point get lower. Okay, so we're first going to start with the vapor pressure. Okay, so if you remember vapor pressure, I like to describe vapor pressure in terms of the liquid's ability to evaporate. Okay, the liquid's ability to evaporate. So these are just um, solvent particles like water, you know, in solution. And then you can just see that some of these particles are demonstrating that those are in the gas phase. Okay, so once again, vapor pressure is the liquid's ability to evaporate. So um, if we say something has a low vapor pressure, so a low vapor pressure means that it does not evaporate easily. It's more difficult to evaporate. So low vapor pressure corresponds to difficult to evaporate. which therefore means that it has strong bonds or attractive forces, okay? So then therefore, if something has a high vapor pressure, it's the opposite, right? So something that has a high vapor pressure means that it um, evaporates very easily, okay? So evaporates easily, easily. And it evaporates easily because the bonds are weak, okay? So weak bonds. All right, so now what we're going to do is, um, now we're going to add a solute to the solution, okay? And this is what it looks like when we add a solute, such as salt, sugar, or something like that. So if we add a solute in solution, you can see here, these uh, yellow circles are representing solute particles. So what's going to happen is, notice that there are fewer uh, solvent particles that are able to evaporate off, okay? So what happens when you add a solute to the solution, it increases the attractive forces, okay? It increases the attractive forces, making it more difficult to evaporate. Therefore, when you add a solute to the solution, the vapor pressure is lowered. Okay, so we, that's why we call this one vapor pressure lowering. Okay, it is even more difficult for it to evaporate. All right, so once again, the more solute particles in solution, it increases the attractive forces, therefore causing the vapor pressure to be lower. Okay, it's going to be more difficult for, for it to evaporate. All right, so that is vapor pressure lowering. And then this is going to lead to boiling point. So let's just talk about boiling point for a second. We talked about boiling point in chapter 10. All right, so let's see if we can fill in the blanks here. Boiling occurs when the blank pressure equals the blank pressure, okay? So what two pressures have to be equal in order for boiling to occur? So if you recall from chapter 10, boiling occurs when the um, vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. 
So if you remember, that's why when you are in a higher altitude area, the pressure's lower. That's why the boiling point was lowered. And that's why it takes longer for food to cook because since the vapor pressure is lower, it lowers the boiling point and you're cooking food at a lower temperature. All right, let's see if we can fill in the last set of blanks here. So therefore, since the blank pressure has been blank, the boiling point has been Okay, so let's think about what happens here. Okay, so what this is supposed to be is, therefore, since the vapor pressure has been lowered, because remember we call this vapor pressure lowering, so if you add in a solute, it lowers the vapor pressure, so therefore, since the vapor pressure has been lowered, so let's think about it. Once again, lower vapor pressure means that the bonds are very strong. So if the bonds are very strong, how do you think that's going to affect the boiling point? It's going to be more difficult for it to boil, right? So that means it's going to boil at a higher temperature. That's why we call this one boiling point elevation. All right, so then the boiling point has been, you can say raised or you can say elevated. Once again, that's why this is called boiling point elevation, okay? Because the more solute particles in solution, increasing the attractive forces, making it more difficult to boil. So it's going to boil at a higher temperature. So that is the um, boiling point elevation. The last colligative property depends on um, or has to deal with freezing point. Okay, freezing point. So remember, like we talked about water a lot when um, ice forms, it's very organized, right? The ice structure is very organized. It's very rigid. Okay. And what happens when you add in a solute like salt or sugar, this is what happens. The solute interferes with the formation of a crystal. So in other words, it's going to interfere with the formation of ice if we're talking about water being the solvent. So it's going to take longer for it to freeze. So how do you think that's going to affect the boiling point? So if it's taking longer for it to freeze because the solute particles are in the way, that means that the freezing points are going to be lowered or what we say the freezing points are depressed okay so then this blank here will be so then the freezing points are we can say depressed here or you can say lowered it means the same thing that's why we call this one freezing point depression okay because when you add a solute the um, freezing point will be lowered all right, so now let's apply this to some things that you might be familiar with. How many of you have made homemade ice cream before? Okay, if you've ever made homemade ice cream, you know that you have like your milk mixture, like your ice cream mixture, and then you have ice, right? The ice portion. Now, do you remember what you add if you've ever made homemade ice cream? What do you add to the ice section? Do you guys remember? You add rock salt, right? You would add rock salt to the ice mixture, and uh, do you know why you do that? Well, you do that because you wanna lower the freezing point. Milk freezes like at negative 10 or negative 20 degrees Celsius, okay? So you're trying to lower or depress the freezing point, so that's why you add rock salt to the water to lower the freezing point. Okay, and then that's how we would make ice cream, and that's how you get the milk mixture to freeze. Those of you who have lived in like the Midwest where it snows a lot, the roads get very icy. Okay, so what they do is they will actually put salt on the roads to lower the freezing point so that the roads will not you know, so ice won't form on the road, so it's safer for people to drive on. So once again, they would add salt on the icy roads to depress the freezing points so that the water will not freeze. So that's how we apply our concepts of colligative properties to, say, everyday life. Okay, so here is a summary of all the colligative properties. You need to be familiar with these. Once again, colligative properties depend on the number of solute particles in solution. So we have vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, and freezing point depression. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some um, examples or like a sample question in terms of 
what um, a colligative property question might look like. All right, so I'm going to write down a few different solutions. So let's do sodium chloride. So let's write NaCl. And let's do C6H12O6. Let's do sugar. And let's do aluminum chloride. Okay? And then what I want to know is um, which solution... Which solution would have the, and so these are going to be our questions, would have the, let's say, lowest freezing point? Which one would have the highest vapor pressure? And then the last question, which one would have the, let's just do um, highest boiling point. Okay, so to answer this question, what we need to do first is we're going to show the equation what these look like when these dissolve in water. Okay, if it's ionic, it will separate into, into its ions. If it's covalent, it will stay together. Okay, don't forget, you identify something that's ionic by having a metal and a non-metal. If it's covalent, it contains non-metals only. All right, so sodium chloride. Where are we? Sodium chloride. So is this ionic or molecular? Well, sodium chloride is ionic. So we're going to write the equation to show what this looks like when this dissolves in water. Since it is ionic, it will separate into its ions. Okay. Then the next one, C6H12O6, is that ionic or covalent? It's covalent. So covalent compounds, yeah, they can dissolve in water, all right? Some of them, you know, if it's polar, remember, like dissolves like. So it can dissolve in water, but it's not going to separate into ions. Since it is a molecule or a molecular compound, it stays together in its uh, molecular form, okay? So it'll just stay together like this. Then the last one, aluminum chloride, is that ionic or covalent? It's ionic. So this separates into its ions. Okay, don't forget the 3 here is going to be moved to the front as a coefficient, so it becomes 3 Cl minus. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add up the number of moles that are produced on the product side. We do that just by adding up the coefficients. So then there's a coefficient of 1 here and a coefficient of 1 there, which gives us two particles, or what we call two moles. So two moles of solute in solution. And then the sugar one here, well, what's the coefficient in front of that one? It's a 1, right? All covalent compounds will always be 1, okay, 1 mole or 1 particle. And then the aluminum chloride has how many? And that's 4. Okay, so we're going to use this information to answer these questions. All right, so which solution would have the lowest freezing point? So think about that. So the lower the freezing point, that means that it's going to take longer for it to freeze. We're going to take in consideration all of these particles in solution. So the one that has the lowest freezing point is going to be the one that has the most particles, the most solute particles in solution, which would be this one right here, which is the aluminum chloride, okay? The reason why that one would have the lowest freezing point is because the more particles there are in solution, that means that it's in interfering more with the formation of ice. So it's really going to take a long time for that ice to form. Okay, so therefore the freezing point will be much lower because it's taking longer for it to freeze. Okay, let's go to the next one. So which one would have the highest vapor pressure? So let's think about it. High vapor pressure means that it can evaporate very easily. Okay, it can evaporate very easily. So out of all of these three solutions, which one looks like it's going to have, say, weaker bonds, weaker attractive forces, allowing it to evaporate very easily? That would be the one that has the least amount of moles. So that's the sugar, the C6H12O6. 
Okay, the last question is regarding which one has the highest boiling point. So let's think about it. High boiling point means that the attractive forces are very strong. It's taking longer for it to freeze, to boil. So then which one um, out of all three solutions looks like it's going to have the strongest um, attractive forces, right? So that would be your aluminum chloride, okay, your aluminum chloride. It will contain the most amount of solute particles in solution, therefore increasing the attractive forces the most, therefore making the solution more difficult to boil, okay? All right, so those are the types of questions that you need to be able to answer regarding colligative properties. And that is everything for Chapter 18, and I will see you guys later. Bye.